it's enormously helpful that on the tactical map each phase of a combat day is listed right there and then each step within that phase that you take in order as you progress through your missions. We'll begin here at the start of day by drawing our special condition card. Let's see what today's special condition is. A munition shortage. You may not spend more than one special option point for each mission when purchasing weapon counters. Now these special condition cards, sometimes they'll help you, sometimes they'll penalize you, they'll make the enemy stronger, sometimes they'll increase your loiter turns, you never know what you're going to get. But today we have a mission, a munition shortage. The next thing we want to do is grab our battalion cards and uh, decide who our targets for this combat day are going to be. I think we'll go ahead and fly two missions. Our first target of the day will be the scout force followed by this command unit. And there's our first target of the day. Okay, we've got our pilots and aircraft divvied up for the day's combat missions. Uh, we've got Tex in an Apache, Grandpa and Scuttle, both flying Cobras, flying against that scout force. And this final mission of the day will be flown by a pirate in an A-10, Rock in an Apache, and our unmanned Predator drone going up against that uh, command unit. Next up, we go ahead and allocate any scouts that we've purchased and want to use. Uh, we only purchased one scout. Uh, that command unit in the second mission of the day is going to be pretty tough. I think we should use the scout for that. So we'll place the scout on the command unit's counter on the, uh, the tactical map. Next up, we're going to arm our aircraft. Let's have a quick look at some of these weapon counters. There's different types of weapons. And what these numbers mean, up here in the top left hand corner, that's the weight value of each weapon. Each aircraft is only rated to take up to a certain amount of weight points. For example, the Apache can carry up to eight. You got the type of weapon. You've got the munitions point value. And the way these work is you can have up to 10 munitions points in weapons for each special operation point you want to spend on weapons. So up to 10 or any fraction thereof worth of weapons points you have, you must spend one special option point. Uh, some weapons that frankly aren't as powerful don't cost any munitions points. Now what this number in the top right hand corner is, is the value or better that you must roll on a die to obtain a hit. These rockets have a special ability, if you roll a 6 or better it's a hit. If you roll 9 or better, not only does the weapon hit, but you get to reuse this weapon, it's not expended. Below that number in the black circle is the weapon's range. This weapon can fire in the same hex or up to three hexes away. Uh, the AIM-9 Sidewinder can only be fired against air-to-air -air targets like enemy helicopters. This AGM-114 can fire up to two hexes away and this number in the red circle, zero, means you cannot use this weapon against enemies in your same hex. And this one here, you can fire in your same hex or into an adjacent hex at a range of one. And then here, you have high and low. This weapon can be fired whether you're at high altitude or low altitude. There are some weapons that can only be fired at high altitude. 
and then at the bottom you'll have letters designating what types of targets this weapon can attack. The AGM-114 can only attack vehicles and buildings, whereas the LAU-86 is not specified, so it's good to fire at vehicles, buildings, and infantry. All right, now we've got our aircraft for the coming mission, armed and ready to go. We've got two, four, seven, eight weight points on the Apache, and six weight points worth of weapons on each of the Cobras. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten munitions points worth of weapons loaded. And we'll record how many special option points we spent on weapons for this mission on our log sheet. Next up, we have to check for target bound mission events. So you draw a mission event card. The top half is for target bound, the bottom half is for home bound. So our event for this mission is creative navigation. Increase your loiter turns over the battlefield by one. That's good for us. Once you've given your terrain tiles a good shuffle, now's the time to place our terrain tiles. Um, you're going to place them 1 through 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, on the board, one at a time, putting the yellow arrow face up. Once your terrain tiles are set up, look at your battalion card, get the enemy counters that are listed on that battalion card, I've already set them aside here, and roll 1d10 for each enemy unit, and place it 1 through 10 wherever the die tells you. Now with our enemy units placed, now we have a better picture of what our tactical situation is. What we do next is place our friendly aircraft. Each one of your pilots has his own counter with an indication for either high altitude or low altitude. We can place our aircraft in any edge hex to enter the map. If it's an aircraft capable of hovering, like a helicopter, it can be placed in the middle of a hex in a hover, or it can be placed at the inside edge of an outside hex. Helicopters can move zero or one. Our friendly aircraft are now placed. Since Tex and Grandpa are both fast pilots and armed with AIM-9 air-to-air missiles, we've got them set up to take a quick shot at these enemy helicopters, which are dangerous. Scuttle, he'll be set up to attack this tank. The next step is, if we had a scout going on this mission, we would roll on the scout table and increase our loiter turns accordingly. Now, we're not using our scout until the second mission. Lastly, we place the loiter counter. In general, there's always five loiter turns over a target. However, thanks to our creative navigation, we get to increase our turns over the battlefield by one. So we'll have six loiter turns over this battlefield before having to return to base. This completes the steps for the target-bound portion of our combat day. After all of our careful preparation, now we move on to the battlefield resolution stage, where we get to blow stuff up. So, the first step in the battlefield resolution stage 
is to draw pop-up counters for any aircraft that might be at high altitude. Now as we can see our three aircraft are both coming in at low altitude. We can ignore pop-up counters for now. The next step is the enemy cover roll. So we consult the enemy's going to cover table and roll to see if any of our enemies are going to try to take cover in the surrounding ridges. Eight. And that's any one unit in each hex. Oh, that's no good. So, what that means is enemies that move to cover in the surrounding ridges can't be fired on, fired on at range. You can't do standoff attacks. Uh, in a case where you have two separate vehicles, you can roll to determine randomly which one takes cover. I'm just going to go ahead and pick the APC. Those units that are in cover can now only be attacked by units in their same hex. Our cover roll complete. Now our fast pilots get to change their altitude, move, and attack. Fortunately, Tex and Grandpa are both fast, so they get to make their attacks now. Scuttle will have to wait. We'll start with Tex. Now, an aircraft can attack and then move. It can move, then attack, or in the case of an aircraft like an A-10 that can move two spaces, an aircraft could move, attack, and then move again to complete their, their two space movement. Since the helicopter's in cover, we're going to have Tex move into this hex. Tex's Apache is armed with an AIM-9 Sidewinder. Tex has to roll three or better in order to shoot the helicopter down. Oh, I think I forgot to mention these yellow stripes on the air-to-air -air weapons. That designates this as an air-to-air -air only weapon. And as you can see, the helicopters have these yellow stripes on them. Now Tex, if we look at his card, he's using a strike attack in the same hex. He has no modifier. So we have to roll that three or better. A four. Tex just makes it. Scratch one enemy helicopter. Flip the counter over to its smoking wreckage side. Tex, who entered the center of the hex, is now in a hover. His move is now complete. Let's move on to Grandpa. Grandpa, he wants to move toward these trucks. He's got a ridge in the way, so he's going to switch to high altitude. And while moving through this hex, he will attack that helicopter with his AIM-9 Sidewinder. Now Grandpa, unfortunately, he has a minus one penalty on strike attacks. That means now I have to subtract one from my die roll. Essentially, I have to roll a four or better to hit. That's a four. Scratch one more helicopter. Grandpa's movement and attacks are now complete. Next up, it's the enemy's turn to launch their attacks against my aircraft. Before we do that, let's take a closer look at the enemy counters. Enemy counters have different symbols on them. Started starting in the top left hand corner. This is the strength value of each counter. Uh, in the battalion card, in order to have the battalion, you can only leave eight strength points worth of units remaining. 
in order to destroy the battalion, you have to have two strength points or less remaining. And each one of these units is worth different amounts of strength points. Up in the top right hand corner, you have how many damage markers you will draw if that, if that enemy unit attacks one of your aircraft. In the yellow, you have light damage counters. So, out of a cup, you would draw two damage counters and look at their yellow side. And then apply whatever damage to your aircraft or pilot is denoted. Uh, up here, if the type of aircraft being fired upon matches the type listed here, it has no effect. Now over here, in exi for example, this SAM, this SAM battery would deal two heavy damage, in which case you deal two damage markers and look at the heavy damage side and apply whatever damage it says. This number in the black circle is the range of the enemy unit. The helicopter can fire into any adjacent hex at a range of one or in its own hex. The tank you'll see has no number. That means it can only fire at targets in its same hex. The surface to air missile is three. The command battalion has a range of one. Oh, and when destroyed, these enemy units, instead of removing them from the map, you just flip them over to their destroyed side. It's cool when you can look behind you and see the path of destruction you've left. So, as for the enemy attack step, we can see all of these enemy units that are remaining have no range outside of their own hex. So for the time being, our aircraft are safe. Now it's time for our slow pilots to move. We'll have Scuttle move into this hex, go into a hover, and launch both of his LAU-68 rockets at that tank that's hiding in the ridgeline. Scuttle, he's got a strike plus one modifier. So now, we only have to roll a five or better to hit with the rocket, and an eight or better in order to be able to keep the rocket and reuse it later. So we're going to roll two dice for this attack because we're launching two rockets. Whoops, I almost missed it. My five or better for the rocket strike has now become seven or better. I have to subtract two from my die roll for attacking this tank. So, six or better. I get to add one to my die roll for Scuttle's uh, strike capability, then subtract two from my die roll for the tank's ability. So it's a total of minus one. I have to roll seven or better, or roll a perfect ten in order to keep my rockets. All right. A one. Ah. That's the first rocket attack. Now for the second. An eight. Oof. I got him with my last rocket. I ended up needing them both. Of all the bad guys in this game, I love blowing up tanks the most. Now that we've completed all of our attacks, we advance the loiter counter. And then move back to the top of the battlefield resolution steps and start over again. Step one, draw pop-up counters for any aircraft at high altitude. Well, Grandpa's cruising at high altitude, so 
let's reach into the cup, pull out a counter. Uh oh. Enemy infantry is going to pop up out of nowhere. What we wanted to get was one of these. But we got an infantry. Let's see where he goes. Hex number nine. So we have a new enemy there. And he's got a range outside of his own hex. We don't like that. A new enemy cover roll gives us a seven. One random hex goes to cover. Let's see which hex. Hex number four. Well, there's nobody in hex number four. Good for us. Fast aircraft attack now. Tex is going to come out of his hover and head toward this hex. When coming out of a hover, its first move must be to the edge of the hex. That infantry is dangerous. It deals two heavy damage counters. So Tex is going to let him have it with both his LAU-61 and his LAU-68. Tex has a minus one standoff penalty. So I need to roll a five or better on this and a seven or better on this. First the LAU-61. I need five or better. Missed. Now the LAU-68. I need seven or better. Two. Another miss. Dang it. Grandpa's turn. He's going to launch an AGM-114 at that truck. Now Grandpa has no modifier for his roll, so it's a four or better. But I get to add two to my roll for the truck's bonus, so I only have to roll a two or better. Alright, some good news at least. Grandpa's going to go to low altitude and travel through the hex. Fast aircraft having made their attacks, now this pop-up infantry can attack either Scuttle or Tex. 1 to 5 is Scuttle, 6 to 10 is Tex. And I rolled a 3. So Scuttle is going to have to draw two damage counters. Heavy damage. Let's see what we got. Scuttle takes three stress and a hit on his cannon. Three stress for Scuttle and his cannon takes damage. Any cannon attack he makes is now at minus two. That was pretty brutal. Next up, the truck draws one light damage against Grandpa. And in the next loiter turn, Grandpa's attacks are going to be minus one. Slow pilots move. All Scuttle has left to fire in his missile inventory are these AGM-114s, good only against vehicles and buildings. So Scuttle is just going to try to get out of there and move to the edge of the hex. Loiter counter. Uh, time's starting to get away from us. We got no aircraft at high altitude, so no pop-up counters. We rolled a nine. One hex with the most active enemy units goes to cover. Well, looks like this is the one with the most active, so he will take cover in that ridge line. Fast aircraft. 
Tex is going to have to do something risky. He's got to do something about this infantry, or Scuttle may be doomed. Tex. He's going to move into this hex and through it. And he's going to go with a gun attack on the infantry. Tex has no modifier on his cannon ability, and the Apache requires a roll of seven or better in order to hit with a cannon shot. Uh, seven or better. I've not been good on my die rolls the last couple of loiter turns. Eight! Got him! Looks like Scuttle's buying drinks at the officers club tonight. Assuming they make it back. Now it's my other fast pilot, Grandpa's turn. On his way out of the hex, He's going to launch the last of his rockets at that remaining truck unit. He's got a minus one penalty from that last hit he sustained, but a plus two bonus because the truck is a pretty easy target. So in total, he's got to roll five or better in order to hit that truck, eight or better in order to not expend his rocket pod. That's a 10. Things are looking up. Boom. Grandpa completes his move. The clock keeps on ticking. Nobody's at high altitude, so no pop-ups. I went ahead and did the enemy cover roll, and they're all already in cover anyway, and no one emerged. So now my fast aircraft get to move. First Tex. Then, then, Grandpa, he'll move there, and he's going to fire his last rocket pod. Remember, we rolled a 10 on that last firing roll so we got to keep our rocket pod. He's going to launch his rockets at that APC. Now there's three strength points worth of enemies left on the board and in order to destroy this enemy force I have to reduce them to, to only two. So we'll fire that rocket and see what happens. I need... Ah, uh, Grandpa's got a minus one so I'm gonna need to roll seven or better. Yikes. Yeah! A nine! See ya. The only two enemies are left are these, and they're not capable of attacking me. So my slow pilot, Scuttle, he makes his move. We advance the loiter counter. Move on to the next phase of combat resolution. No high altitude aircraft, so no pop-ups. Enemy cover. Oh, a 10. Any one hex emerges from cover. Well, that's okay. I'm getting out of here. Next, my fast aircraft move. Grandpa moves off the map. Tex moves. No enemies capable of attacking. Scuttle moves. Move the loiter counter. Ooh. No pop-ups. Enemy cover. Nobody. Fast aircraft move. No enemy attacks. Scuttle moves, and we get off the map just in time, before the, the loiter counter goes to bingo fuel. With all the combat for that mission now resolved, now we go to the homebound steps. We start by adjusting the battalion strength counter. Oh, I've made a terrible mistake. 
I forgot that was a tank up here in this hex. There are three strength points of this battalion remaining. So it's not destroyed. Less than eight, but above two. The strength of this battalion has only been halved. So instead of being able to remove Battalion 8A, I just get to flip it to half strength. Oh man, that's disappointing. I can't believe I made that mistake. Alright, let's see what our homebound mission event is going to be. Maintenance priority. You may freely repair damage on each aircraft, repair one damage on each aircraft returning from the mission. Well, little consolation prize. I can remove this cannon damage off of Scuttle's Cobra. Next up, if any of our pilots had crashed, we would roll for search and rescue. No one crashed, so what we do now is we record pilot stress, pilot experience points earned, and victory points earned. Each pilot will take one stress for attacking into the front line range band. As you can see, the farther out the range is, the more stress the pilots take. Also, the closer the enemy gets to our air base, the more stress pilots get. Each of our pilots gets an experience point for flying the mission. They would have each gotten an extra experience point had I not goofed and been able to destroy the entire battalion. We've marked down our stress. One for Tex, one for Grandpa, then the one for Scuttle plus the three stress he took in battle which brought him to four. Then we close out the mission. We started with three special option points, spent one on munitions, lost no other special option points. It's not the end of the day yet, so we gained no special option points, spent no special option points on repairs. Target status is one half, and since we halved the battalion, we get to take one half of the victory points rounded down. In this case, one victory point for having the battalion. If we can go back on a future mission and finish taking out this battalion, we can finish and earn the other victory point for completely destroying it. And we lost no victory points. So we carry the special option points we have remaining for the day over to the next mission. If you have more missions scheduled for that day, begin again with your next set of aircraft with a target bound phase, then a battlefield resolution phase, then a home bound phase, recording again pilot stress, experience points, and victory points gained for any destroyed or halved battalions. Finally, at the end of the combat day, go through the end of day procedures starting with no-fly stress recovery. Any pilots which did not fly at all the previous combat day can recover two stress plus their cool rating. Gain special option points. For this campaign, show of force, we gain six new special option points per day. Record that on your mission log. Next, move enemy battalions. You do this by consulting the enemy battalion table, rolling 1d10 for each type of unit, individually each unit, move them 
have them hold in place or retreat them as the dice dictate. Next is lose special option points as a result of map movement. As you can see, as the enemy gets closer to your airbase, you'll start being penalized special option points. Next up is replacements. For two victory points, victory points, you can replace uh, crashed aircraft or aircraft that are heavily damaged. Or for one victory point, you can also replace stressed out or killed pilots. Uh, note that replaced aircraft must be replaced with aircraft of the same type. If you're going to replace a pilot, it must be a pilot of the same type of aircraft and at the same skill level. Next, you can spend two special option points to recover up to two stress from every pilot in your squadron. And then finally, we advance the day counter. That completes a full combat day of operations in Thunderbolt Apache Leader. At the very end of the game, add up all of your victory points for destroyed and halved battalions, add them up, compare them to the chart for your selected campaign, and see how you did. Thanks for joining me everybody. Until next time, happy gaming.